Good morning, my dear friends, and welcome to this fifth Sunday of Easter. Mass is offered from Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. And today we also celebrate Mother's Day. And so we pray for, offer this Mass for our mothers. Pray and ask that God may bless them, that God may protect them, that God may keep them safe for all of their sacrifices to our world. We pray especially for those who are sick at this time, that God may help them find quick healing and return to their duties as, as caretakers and loving, loving circuits of their families. We pray for those who have passed, that God may grant them rest and peace. And in this hospital, we pray for our sick, we pray for our medical staff, Pray for those in our research department, those who are working night and day to see an end to this virus. We pray for all those who are living in fear. Fear because the future looks so uncertain. Fear because they have lost something that once provided the foundation for their livelihood and for provision to their family. We pray for those who have lost investments and businesses that God may be with them and help them find comfort that there is a way forward. We also want to pray for all those who have asked our prayers at this time, the many we have promised to pray for. We just want you to know that we are praying for you and we believe God is doing something about your situation. For our entrance hymn today, we will, we will sing the song Lord, you have come to the seashore. Lord, you have come to the seashore. Lord, you have come to the seashore. Night are searching for the rich nor the wise. Desiring only that I should follow. O oh Lord, with your eyes set upon me, gently smiling, you have spoken my name. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My dear friends, we celebrate today the fifth Sunday of Easter. In this Mass, we pray for the intentions we have mentioned, and we'll give you a few seconds or a few minutes, a few seconds to bring your own intentions to this altar of God's grace and mercy. And we believe that from this altar to God's altar in heaven, your intentions will rise like incense because the Lord said so. So let us bring up our petitions 
to God. And now to prepare intentions and to prepare ourselves to offer these intentions to God, let us acknowledge our unworthiness and our sinfulness and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins. May he bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the past or mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. My dear friends, our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve gathered together the community of disciples and said to them, It is not right for us to neglect the work of God and serve at table. Brothers, Select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Procrus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large number of a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, Alleluia. Exalt you just in the Lord. Praise for the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With a ten string lion, lion with a ten string lie, chant his praises. Alleluia. Upright is the word of the Lord. 
and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Hallelujah. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Hallelujah. A second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in scriptures, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. A stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word as is their destiny. You are a chosen race. A royal priesthood. A holy nation, a people set apart so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If they were not, would I have told you that I was going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth 
and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you also know the Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long a time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has sent me has sent the Father. Do you not believe that I am in the Father? Now the Father is in me. The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or else, believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. My dear friends, first I will begin by expressing my gratitude and appreciation to all of you for hanging in there and for all holding on for this last two months. They have been the most difficult months, not just in our nation's history, but I think in the world, for a long time. We've never seen anything close to this, at least not in our lifetime. But somehow, your faith, your faith in God, your faith in yourself, and your faith in each other have kept us thriving through all of this. Maybe, barely hanging on for some. So I want to say thank you. Thank you for everything you are doing for your families, for yourself, to stay healthy, to stay sane until all of this is over. We know there is an expiration. And we will be there to see that expiration of this virus. Today, um, the Lord Jesus is addressing his disciples. And I'd like to place a context here. Uh, when we read in John's Gospel, chapter 13, verse 31, Judas leaves the college. He leaves the group to go and do whatever he wanted to do as a traitor. That happens in John 13, 31. And so the moment he leaves, Jesus realizes time was up. Whatever that happens from that moment was him providing guidance, instructions, reassurance to the 11. <coughs> letting them know what is going to happen and letting them know that their future is secure and protected. And so what you see from chapter 14 is that those last instructions, those final instructions that Jesus is providing for the disciples. Now he had told them in chapter 13 of his impending death, betrayal, death, crucifixion, and resurrection. And he could see from their faces anxiety, distress. They were not sure. These guys were really, really, really almost like knocked off from everything they had hoped for going forth for them. And so Jesus senses that their hearts are racing. Their minds are troubled, disoriented because so many questions, unanswered questions were just raging in their minds. And he needed to calm those anxieties. He needed to address those fears. He needed 
to create new assurance in the hearts of the disciples. And, and so when I look at that time that the apostles were, were facing, and I look at the time that we are, you see parallels. Times were different, the experiences were different, but you can see parallels. When we see the news and see the number of infections around the world, especially here in our country, we see the number of people dying. And we read messages or phone calls about people we know, people we saw last month. And all we hear is, they died and they've been buried. You didn't even hear when they died. All you heard was, they have been buried. You watch and see the stock market and you see our economy just draining, not just jobs, but draining its value. And you, you see millions and millions of families waking up not sure if they would have a meal next week or the week after or next month. You watch and see people who have invested all of their lives in their savings and all of that just going down the drain. There is no doubt that all of us will be troubled, will be scared, will be uncertain of what the future holds. And, and I can say this, and I say it with a lot of conviction. No one, no one living right now on earth knows what the future holds for us. No one. No expert. Nobody. But there's good news. The good news is that there is somebody who knows the future, knows our future, and it is Jesus Christ. He knows the future. He knows what your tomorrow will be like. He knows what my tomorrow will be like. He knows what he is going to do. Even though we have no idea, no clue. We are only seeing the numbers and seeing everything that scares the hell out of every one of us. It did for the apostles, even though they were sitting there with Jesus. And so Jesus understands what you're feeling, what I am feeling, what the world is feeling. There is global anxiety right now. Because no one is sure if we are ever going to be able to travel again the same way. If we're ever going to do the things we did before, go to our diners and have dinner and just be free, having fun, go to our beaches. No one is sure if we would ever have normalcy any longer. We don't even know what that looks like, normalcy any longer. <clears throat> so there is a lot of anxiety. People are anxious. And it's to all of those anxious minds anxious lives, anxious families, anxious leaders, anxious nations, anxious caregivers, anxious patients, anxious families that are seeing their loved ones die without them, that the Lord addresses these words. Because he cares about no less than he cared about the eleven. He is concerned about our situation, no less than he was concerned about their situation. And he said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Don't forget, the Lord did not say there will be no trouble. Because he already told us when you read John's Gospel, chapter 16, you read verse 33. He said, in the world, you would find a lot of trouble. There will be a lot of trouble out there, a dose of it, to fill every human heart. But he says, do not be afraid because I have overcome all of that. So that means he has the vaccine for your problem and for my problem and for the world's problem. He does have. So he says to the disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. So what will be the answer? What will be the course of action if I am not to be troubled? If you are not to be troubled, he offers it in the next verse, on the next sentence. Do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Trust in God. Trust also in me. Now, why would the Lord say that to the apostles or say that to you or to me right now? I, I, won't, I will be making empty promises. 
If I said to you, in my own authority, don't let your heart be troubled. Those will be empty words. But not to him who created heaven and earth, who has the whole world in the palm of his hand. If he says that to you, you can rest assured that he means what he says because he has the capacity and the goodwill and the resources and the ability to do what he says he will do. He is not the son of man that he should lie. So the Bible says. So he said to the apostles then, do not let your hearts, as he says to you, do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God. Have faith in him. Now, it is always very difficult to have faith at moments like this. Even for the most faithful people. You remember from the diaries of St. Teresa of Calcutta, how she struggled with her own faith at moments like this. She questioned the existence of God, the goodness of God, and why God's existence and goodness can come together and fill and, and fix all of the world's tragedies. You remember St. John of the Cross in the dark night of the soul? He also wondered where is the comforting of the Spirit promised all to, to, to all of God's believers? So, any number of people out there, even Jesus himself, typified for us when he cried, why have you abandoned me? In the face of the unthinkable and the unimaginable, as human beings, we question the source and the foundation of where we stand in. We lose the assurance that once gave us confidence. We lose the trust in the promises that once gave us the impetus to move on. We question everything we've always known because suddenly everything doesn't make sense any longer. And so the Lord said that. You know what Thomas said after that? He says, Lord, how can we know the way? How we don't even know where you're going to. So how can we know the way? I'm thinking about that. That was a question of skepticism. Lord, these promises are bogus. They are too good to be true. Would you give us more to assuage our hearts and our minds? That's what Thomas was saying. And I'm sure any number of you have said the same thing. I have said that. God, could you just give us something more to help us know that next week, next month, next year, Maybe, maybe two months after, life will come back to what it was before. We want to see something more. Those promises are good, but we want to see something more. That's what Thomas was saying to the Lord. That was a question of skepticism. He wasn't sure. Even though the Lord said, trust in God, trust also in me. He struggled to trust in what God has said and what the Lord had promised. So maybe you're asking yourself those questions right now. Will I ever have my business back? Will I ever have my job back? Is everything ever going to be okay? Is life going to be secure again? Is my future secure? You may be asking all of those questions, even though God has said to you, trust, if you trust, at a moment like this, trust me, trust God. So that's okay. God is okay. He can handle it your skepticism. He can handle your questions and he will provide answers. The Lord Jesus went on to provide an answer for Thomas. He doesn't brush off the question because he had to go on and provide greater clarity. And so he answers him. He says, I am the way and the truth and the life. Now, what, is, what does that say to you and to me? Look, at this time, everyone that I know on the face of the earth is looking for what I consider the global positioning system to lead us to an answer. We're looking for an answer. We're looking for the way that will lead us to an answer, whether it's for a vaccine or for some therapeutic cure. One is seeking. 
Everyone is seeking for answers. We're looking for the way to something. Whether the way to secure our businesses, the way to secure our investments, the way to secure our health, the way to do whatever it is that we want to do right now. We're looking for the way forward. And the Lord Jesus, that's what the apostles were also looking. The Lord Jesus offers and says, I am that way. That means, you trust me. If you trust me, I will show you the way. If you have ever traveled without knowing the way and learned how difficult it is, that's how we're trying to struggle, struggle right now in this world. And I wish this, this moment will also offer us an opportunity to recognize whose world this is, whose enterprise this is. It is God, and this is his only son, Jesus Christ, who is the way that God intervenes in the world. And Jesus is offering himself, says, if you want to get to where you're going to, you come to me. I provide the way and the guidance and the lead. That did not convince the apostles, at least not all of them. Philip had to ask a question, a question of greater, greater assurance. He said to the Lord, this was, he was more like a realist, he had to ask, he says, Lord, yes, I really want to be convinced. I really want to believe you. But this is what I feel. Honestly, this is what I feel. I feel like we have spent three years with you. And right now, you're cutting us loose with empty promises. That's how I feel. That's what Philip was saying to the Lord. I feel like we spent three whole years with you. Now you're cutting us loose. You're trying to, to find a way to sneak away from us with empty promises. Show us a father. That will be enough for us. At least that will let us know that we have not labored in vain. That what you said is true. Show us a father. If you can show us a father, we will believe you. We will believe everything you are saying to us right now. So that tells the debate that was going on in the minds of the apostles that Jesus recognized when he says, I see your hearts are troubled. Have faith in God. Have faith also in me. That was hard for this guy. And the Lord Jesus just wasn't angry at Philip, wasn't angry at Thomas. He went ahead to explain. He took the time to still assuage those anxieties and those worries. He says, Philip, you've been with me for all this while. You mean you have not recognized that I'm in the Father and the Father is in me? That the Father and I are one? To have seen me is to have seen the Father. Right now, you have seen him. And you know him. My dear friends, very quick, very soon, right now, right here, right here, you will see not just the body of Christ, the bread of Christ. In that bread, you will see the solution to the world's problems. And that's Christ Jesus. He offers us himself from this altar to every heart that seeks and desires him. As you struggle in your faith, to believe if your future is secure, if your life is ever going to be the same again. I know your life is secure. I don't know if it's going to be the same again. Very likely, it will not be the same again. But God never promised us that our lives will be the same. And our lives have never been the same anymore. Because in every event, the Lord takes our lives one step higher and one step higher through all the crucibles of life and the difficulties and challenges of life, he never leaves us in one place. And this event will not leave us in the same place. God will take us higher and higher and higher. And that's God's promise. I, I know this gospel stops in chapter, in verse 12. But if you read verse 27 of this same gospel, this is what the Lord said. He said, peace I leave you. Now he gives you the promise. Peace I leave you. That's the kind of peace that you and I need at a moment like this. To be untroubled by troubles. To be unfazed by fears. And to, be, to, be, to not be worried, even though there is reason for worry. It says, peace I leave you. My peace I give you. And not as the world gives, do I give it to you. Let your hearts not be troubled. Now let them be fearful. 
Let your heart not be troubled, nor let them be fearful. And I pray, dear friends, that as every day we wake up and see those numbers tick up, go up, not every day, we will see that in all of that, God is connecting all the dots for every one of us. I believe that. Because God has that too under his control. God has you under his control. God has me under his control. Do we find faith at moments like this? To trust our good God and to trust our powerful Savior. What he promised he will do, I know he will do it. As always, I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are still the delight of the Almighty God. That God still loves you as he always did. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, who was in kind of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism. For the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may feel fu fulfill our call to be living stones who make Christ's presence known. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are in need, especially those who are homeless, our seniors, those who are poor, those who are without jobs, those who are so critically ill and sick and feel forgotten, that they may be filled with nourishment of body, soul, and spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For deacons and for those discerning the call to the diaconate, the priesthood, and the religious life, especially at this time where we have lost a good number of our priests, deacons, and religious. That God will inspire his call in the hearts of young people. That they may be strengthened in their vocation of service to God's love and support for our communities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our healthcare workers, for medical researchers, for those who produce equip medical equipment, for those who make them available to us at this time, that you, O God, may bless the hands that care for the sick, the intellect 
that provide our equipment and tools and the goodwill that make those available. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for our sick. Pray especially for those here in our hospital. And pray for those sick around the world. Especially those critically ill from coronavirus. That you, O oh God, may provide inspiration, clear guidance and direction to our medical staff. So that whatever intervention they do for our sick, may result in their healing and recovery. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have died, especially those who have died from the coronavirus, pray for our priests, our brothers and sisters, and all people around the world, that they may be drawn to the Father's dwelling place, where there is peace, Refreshment and rest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our mothers on this Mother's Day. That mothers all around the world may receive the blessings of God for the sacrifices of their love, their care, and provision for their families. And that children all around the world and, and husbands may express through appreciation for the sacrifices of their mothers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our Blessed Mother's intercession in this month of our, of our Blessed Lady, as together we say, the Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercies, our lives are our sweetness and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve, to you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus, O Clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Let us pray. Gracious God, you call us to you and to one another through your Son, the risen Christ. Hear these prayers we have brought to you. Listen to all the other prayers we place on this altar at the beginning of this Mass. We offer them lovingly to your abiding presence and ask, O oh God, that you may take them and grant them because we bring them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. In bread we bring you, Lord, our bodies, labors. In wine we offer you our spirits, deep. We do not ask you, Lord, to ease my people. They join you night at night, one in the leaf. For we have gladly heard your word, your holy word, and now in answer, Lord, our gift we bring, our failing faith make whole. Our failing hearts renew, our lives belong to you, our Lord and God. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice, have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to Lord yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is reborn and renewed, and the integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring all to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With confidence, dear friends, let us use the words our Lord gave us and address our prayers to our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Deliver us especially from this present evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress, as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of God's peace. My dear friends, from me to you and to your families, peace of Christ be with you. And to all our mothers out there, I just want to wish you from this place to all of you a very happy, a very blessed, and a very merry Mother's Day. God bless you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Because we are all unable to participate physically as we normally would do, in the body and blood of the Lord. Let us ask that the Lord, the chief pastor himself, will bring his body to our lives, to our homes, and to everywhere that we are right now and worshiping. That the full effect of this sacrament will be felt in our lives, in our homes, and especially in our, in our faith. We ask that he will minister healing to those who are sick, comfort to those who are stressed, and peace to those who live in fear. For we ask all of this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Take all our 
daily toils, planting our hearts for soil, take all we start and spoil, each hopeful dream, the chances we have missed, the graces we resist, Lord, in this Eucharist, take and redeem. Lord, in this Eucharist, take and redeem. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O oh Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the rings of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing. I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you who were able to join us in this celebration of the Eucharist. I know we have God's wind behind us. And with God's wind behind us, the words of St. Paul will be true. We will be more than conquerors because of him who has us. Let us keep pressing forward, not because there is no reason to fear, but because we have one who has overcome fear, not because there is no reason to worry, but because the one who holds our lives is above all worries, not because there, is no, there, there are no questions to ask, but because there is one who has all answers to every human question and yearning, and he is Jesus the Lord and he is the Lord of your life and he loves you to death he loves you to death if you forget everything and anything I said today don't forget that that you are the delight of him who hangs on this cross for you who rose from the dead for you he loves you without measure and he loves you without condition my dear friends, I want to wish you a very, very blessed day today. But I don't want to leave this moment or let this moment pass me. I want to wish all our mothers, all our godmothers, all our grandmothers, all our expecting mothers, all our young mothers, every mother out there, I just want to wish you a very, very merry and blessed Mother's Day. It's sad we cannot celebrate you the way we would like to today. But I pray that the blessings of God may overtake anything that we could ever do to you. Would overwhelm you in every good way. We appreciate everything that you guys do. You make a huge difference in our world. May God bless you. May God reward you. May God give you pride in what you do. You are the reason why the world moves around and functions. We love you. The Lord be with you. Through the prayers of our blessed mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the closing hymn, we will sing a hymn to our Blessed Mother, and we will sing Hail Mary, 
gentle woman. Hail Mary, gentle woman. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and all the hour of our death. Amen. Gentle woman, quiet Lord, morning star. So strong and bright, gentle mother, peaceful dove, teach us wisdom, teach us love.